This is Journeys to the Ice, the podcast of the Antarctic Research Centre. I'm Matthew Wood, and this week on the show we're going to be hearing from the next generation of Antarctic scientists. The Antarctic Research Centre has long understood the importance of educational outreach initiatives, and each year visits local schools to introduce young people to the fascinating world of Antarctic research. An ocean drilling vessel called the Joides Resolution visited Wellington in early January and was the perfect centrepiece to capture the imaginations of kids with an interest in the natural sciences. Richard Levy is a paleoclimate scientist at GNS Science and was the coordinator of a recent children's educational holiday program that invited young aspiring scientists to discover ancient worlds hidden beneath the ocean floor. Hi Richard, thanks very much for joining us today on Journeys to the Ice. It's good to be here, Matt. As an introduction, could you tell us about your personal involvement with the Antarctic Research Centre and also outline the ties between the ARC and GNS Science more generally? Sure. I actually just recently came back to New Zealand a year and a half ago. I was based in the States for quite some time and my relationship with the ARC really began while I was in the States working with the ANDRIL program, of course, the US and New Zealand were heavily involved in the Antarctic Geological Drilling Program that was uh, recently completed. So I had a lot to do with the ARC staff from my time in the States. Moving back to New Zealand to work at GNS, then obviously that relationship is just a natural one to continue. But probably more than that, GNS actually has a, a formal tie to the ARC through the Joint Antarctic Research Institute. Tim Nash is the director of that institute and I'm actually the deputy director. So we have a very close tie between GNS and the ARC. A lot of the science we are involved in is joint and collaborative. Now this summer course was the first of its kind to be run by GNS. What inspired the idea for the program and what were the overarching themes that it explored? The rationale behind the holiday program really was we recognised that the Geordie's Resolution was coming into Wellington Harbour and thought it was a great opportunity to really highlight some pretty amazing international large-scale science that's going on and that New Zealand is involved in, try to highlight that to the New Zealand public. And of course, we thought it, it was a great opportunity to get kids involved in learning about the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program specifically, but perhaps more importantly, learning about what real scientists do, what real earth scientists do, trying to get the kids involved in science outside of textbooks getting them involved in actually doing what real scientists are doing on a, on a daily basis. So getting them on the ship so they can see this amazing platform and, and sort of experience for themselves what it's like. But then also getting them involved in collecting their own cores and working on, on sediment and getting their hands dirty, asking questions, making observations, interpreting their observations and trying to come up with a story to explain what they've seen. And we wanted to give the kids a good sense of the big picture and of course two of the big picture topics that are quite relevant to us all today are climate change and sea level change and tied to that is ice volume variability. The reason we chose the topics that we did cover beyond them just being topical we hear about climate change in the media pretty much every day it's a very relevant topic to our future generation so beyond that the fact that the Geordie's resolution was down here in Wellington as part of a leg, of a, of a drilling leg that was actually investigating sea level and then it was on its way down to Antarctica to look at ice volume variability sort of helped us obviously identify those topics as being topics we wanted to explore with the kids. So it was directly tied into the objectives of the Ocean Drilling Program. So the holiday program was aimed at 12 to 15 year olds. Why this age group and not say year 12 or 13 students? We mulled this around for quite some time, you know, what age did we target? And sort of initially we actually thought we'd like to bring in some of the younger kids, kids uh, that are in primary school that, you know, arguably don't get a lot of science because they're focusing on reading and, and some, of the, some of the other skills that are very important. But we were told by the Ocean Drilling Program that we couldn't bring kids under the age of 12 on board the ship. So that really sort of set our lower level. As far as the upper end was concerned, we sort of put 12 to 15 because quite honestly, uh, I thought that uh, kids over the age of 15, 16 were probably going to be pretty busy with holiday jobs and perhaps, you know, they'd be doing the NCEAs or, or at least the exams, the external exams and might not be wanting to come back in the holiday for a science program. Although it, it wasn't a, a, an actual limit. If you were older than 15, you could, you could have come along. I mean, in fact, we did have uh, one kid that's going into year 12, I believe, come along and I think he enjoyed the program too. 
And by the end of the week, do you think that the kids had a good grasp on the various scientific concepts that you'd introduced to them? We didn't want to do any formal assessment as part of this program. We didn't want to put pressure on, on the participants that they felt they had to learn something and then show us in a formal test that they've understood the concepts that we've been trying to get across. However, we did do, do sort of informal assessment by just asking questions and having them give us feedback. And, and at the end of the program, we had the presentation time where the kids could present back to their parents what they'd learned. And so just by hearing what they were saying, it became pretty apparent to me that they'd really understood quite a lot about the ocean drilling program, about sea level change, the causes of sea level change. I mean, thermal expansion of the ocean, melting of ice bodies on land. They were all, or many of the kids were able to articulate a fairly clear understanding of these concepts. So my take is that they learned a heck of a lot. I know a lot of them bought quite a significant amount of knowledge with them. A lot of them were already quite keen on science, but I think every one of them expressed to me, either directly or indirectly, that they'd got a lot out of the program and learned a lot. I went to the presentation evening at GNS to see what the kids had learned. A lot of this was put together in two hours today. We did it this morning before we rushed off up the hill to see the particle accelerator that many people wanted to go and see and also put everyone inside a minus 37 degree room for a few minutes just to remind you how lucky we are with this fabulous warm Wellington summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all relative. So. So we went on to the Geordies Resolution and we were given a tour of the whole ship. But the main icon on our trip was the drill, which brings up sediment caused from the ocean. It's got 216 staff to cook, clean, to handle the cranes, do the drill, everything pretty much. It's a 9 metre long core. After the core is brought up, it's cut into 1.5 metre long cores and then cut in half photographed and then put into an archive. Then the other half is looked through gamma radiation and they put it through a sound thing to find out how fast the sound travels through the rock. So basically what you're describing are these all these fancy pieces of equipment sitting on this ship. So it's a, it's a floating state-of-the-art geological lab. You can imagine the cost to do this is, is quite high. When you factor in the cost of, of recovering it, each meter of core can be worth much more than some of the fairly expensive pieces of artwork that might be hanging in museums in Wellington, for example. All of these things here, all of the machines that these guys have been showing us, are actually great because they're non-destructive. They don't actually destroy the core. So we, we try to collect as much data as we can from these cores because it costs so much money to get them and they're also so valuable scientifically. The day before yesterday, we went out to Potomac Wharf and we went going. It was different from the way that the Joydies resolution works. Instead of pissing coronal with the drill going down, we had four metres of PVC pipe and we put it all into the sea and then we hit it down until we managed to keep the core inside the pipe and we lifted it out and it smelt really badly of sulphur. We could already see this fossil of the mussel, which was quite exciting. So we, we already knew that the deepest part of what we had drilled was still younger than Petone Wharf because the muscles could have only been there when Petone Wharf was. And so then we took it back to the lab and we split it open. So then we had black goop. We then, in groups of one or two, got a spoonful or two of the goop and then we put it through a series of sieves of varying fineness to get all the little fossils which we could out of it. So there was a bigger sieve with bigger holes and that got out all the bigger mussel shells and then they went really down until there were some really fine ones which left only what looked like mud but when we put it under the microscope we could see all these tiny little crystals and fossils in it that was very cool. The Geordies is going to be going to Antarctica soon and when it gets there its research is going to be considering sea level rise. The difference between an ice sheet and an ice shelf is that the ice sheets are grounded on the seafloor, however the ice shelves are just floating in the water. If a succession of warm summers occur, the ice will retreat a bit, and if a succession of cold summers occur, it will fluctuate out. Um, this has been fluctuating a lot in a regular pattern for a long period of time, many millions of years.
And one of the things we were trying to look into over the past few days is what sorts of things cause sea levels to go up and down. Globally, there are only a few things that can affect sea level as a whole. And one of them is ice volume change. And by drilling in Antarctica, we can get a record of ice volume change directly. By drilling offshore Canterbury, what we were able to get was a geologic record of sea level change over the past 10 to 15 million years. And we try to match the two up and say, okay, is ice volume change the primary driver of sea level change you know, over the last 15 million years? But there are other things that, that cause sea level, and I think if Thomas and Simon and Ben pop one up now and talk a little bit about an experiment we conducted. We're working on thermal expansion, which is one of the two ways that you get a higher sea level. We've got coloured water in a jar and we're heating it up with a really hot lamp. And that there is the line in which it started and as it heats up more, you'll notice that there's a change in the water level and the current temperature is 24 degrees. As snow falls, it traps little bubbles of air and then it gets compacted into ice but the air is still there from that time period and then what happens is they melt the ice and collect the gas and they can see what the atmosphere is like. So um, with this test here I might leave it running for a bit longer while the other presentations go but currently it's up to there with the water level and the temperature is at 32 degrees so I'll now elaborate a bit more on thermal expansion. So heat is a form of energy and when you add more energy to particles they speed up because particles are always moving unless they're at absolute zero so they always have atomic movement and that movement is really small when it's a solid form a bit faster when it's in a liquid form and then it can go really quite fast if it's in a gas form but as particles move faster and faster they get further and further apart and this causes thermal expansion and so that would cause sea level to rise just from more heat being added to the oceans and therefore causing the water to expand. What I learned about science is that it can't really be a lecture sort of thing, but it has to be a hands-on experience so that you actually get a taste of science for yourself rather than just from other people's experience. I moved back here about a year, just over a year ago, from 15 years in the States, and <clears throat> science education in the States is seen as being incredibly important. There's a lot of governmental funding and pressure to enhance science education across the board, but particularly in schools. So there's this real difference between New Zealand and the US and the value that's placed on science. And I think a lot of that comes from up on high, where in the US they're saying science is important, science gives us knowledge we can advance by using science. So I think perhaps I'm starting to sense a shift in New Zealand from parents, from people in the public, that. We need to value science a little higher, so we appreciate your efforts to encourage your kids to come and learn more about science, and we want to just broaden it as much as we can, because I think you, you probably agree it's, it's a thing that we should value. So what do you reckon, Richard? Do you think the fields of climate change research and Antarctic science are going to be in good hands in the future? I think so. I think there were a lot of bright kids that were participating in this course and if they do continue along the road and become scientists themselves then that's great but perhaps even more importantly or more significantly even if they don't chase a scientific career we're in pretty good hands because we're going to have a, a, have a group of people out in the public that understand climate and climate change and climate change science and the importance of Antarctica and so on and so forth and, and the relevance of large scale drilling programs like the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program and helping us as part of our human endeavour to understand the planet on which we live. So yeah, if they become politicians, accountants, lawyers, mechanics, engineers, whatever, these kids will hopefully hold with them this experience from this holiday program and the knowledge they gain. Well, I understand you're a busy man, so I'll let you get back to planning the next phase of Andril. But thank you very much for your time today and for all your efforts with the holiday program. Thanks, Matt. It's honestly, it was a pleasure. I, I love interacting with the kids and love teaching. So uh, yeah, watch the space for next year, I guess. For more journeys to the ice, visit cyblogs.co.nz forward slash journeys to the ice.